Well, ahoy there, and welcome back to another quick wet shaving tip, YouTube channel style, with your pal, Douglas Smythe from HowToGrowMustache.com and the Mustache and Blade podcast. What's happening, folks? Today, we are going to be talking about a loom. Ah, uh, the mysteries of a loom. There's nothing like sliding a crisp, wet bar of a loom across your face after you've just shaved. Uh, it can be your best friend or your worst enemy, depending on how good of a shave you've had. This really, really comes down to technique. Uh, and again, this is a way to motivate or inspire yourself to work on your technique. Because if your technique's not down, you're going to have little microscopic nicks and whatnot that you may not see at first. You may not see ever. But you will notice they're there when you slide this block across your face. It's going to sting. So, again, it's a good litmus test to find out if your technique's up to par or not. After each shave, slide a bar as you're learning. You know, this is a great way to go. Uh, slide the bar across your face, and it'll tell you if it was a good shave or not, depending on how much it stings. Uh, so that's that. Um, one thing about a loom that we've all noticed, a few of you have spoken about this too, including Christopher Peace, how uh, most folks tend to drop these things. I'm guilty of this myself. Um, how do we get past the whole Butterfinger thing? I mean, it's really just a block of slippery mineral, you know, at the end of the day. So it really doesn't want to stay in your hands. This one's wrapped in plastic right now. I have yet to open it. But I'm going to work on how to maintain your grip on this bad boy. And also a technique on how to uh, prevent pitting. If this isn't stored properly, it will pit. It'll become rough. And it's not something you really want to rub across your face at that point. You want to keep it slick and new. So working on the grip. This is your best friend. This should be in everyone's shaving kit and on everyone's shaving top shelf. Um, this back when I was growing up, we would call these things lobster claw elastics. That's <laughs> give me lobster claw elastics. Yes, we do. These held the lobster claws uh, closed, as you may very well know, while they were alive. Nowadays, you see this on vegetables as well. Um, broccoli, you can find it on broccoli. A few other forms of produce. So they're free, and they, I'm telling you, hold on to these things. They're great. Throw them in your kit. And with that said, this is what we do. Once the plastic wrap has been peeled off your loom. Keep this on one side of your bar of a loom, and it will give you tremendous grip. I mean, it's rubber, for Christ's sakes. This is rubber. So it, it'll give you a great grip, so you can apply it sideways or even the side of the bar itself without, with less chance, rather, of dropping it because of the slip, slipperiness or the slickness of the whole bar. Um, so that's one way to hold on to your block of a loom. Another is uh, what's in the bottle. It's kind of like what's in the box. Did I say that? What's in the bottle? What's in this bottle is glycerin. Glycerin is another thing that should be in everyone's shave den and everyone's shave kit. It has so many purposes. Uh, one purpose is to build an uber lather, uh, adding it to the top of your shaving soap as you're whipping up lather. It'll just boost it. It's a booster. Um, so that's one great reason to keep it in your kit. Another great reason to keep it in your kit is it provides grip to your fingers. Uh, you may wonder why this is important. Well, you're probably putting it together why this is important. Why this is important is the bar. Before you use your loom bar, um, squirt a couple drops of a loom of uh, glycerin rather on your fingers. This will give you grip while using this. And that will take us to a, a pro tip. Another great use for glycerin that uh, very few people realize or know of is, okay, when you're shaving, it's important to have a lead hand. Your right hand holds your safety razor. Your lead hand pulls the skin taut as you're going. Now, hopefully all of you have uh, mapped out your beard growth and which direction it grows in. So your lead hand would be, one, finding the growth, where it's going, and then getting in front of it or behind it and pulling it taut as you shave. This is easier said than done, especially if you're one of those folks that use a pre-shave oil. Uh, so now you have oil, you have a slippery lather on top, hopefully a very slick lather too, and now you're trying to pull your skin tight. It's sliding all over the place. It's ineffective. It doesn't work. Well, glycerin. Yeah, <laughs> it's amazing. Dip some glycerin or dip your fingers in glycerin and now pull the skin taut. It'll go right through the lather, uh, lather and it'll grip. Makes it so much easier. Back in the day, I used to work in a printing shop where we would do hand collation. Uh, we would hand collate newsletters or magazines together. And rather than licking our fingers every page we need to pick up, not only is that not sanitary, which we didn't speak of back then, it's just not right. So we would keep a little bowl of glycerin in front of us, dip our fingers in it, 
and then go back to collating. It would pick the paper right up. Awesome stuff. So keep that in mind when you are trying to grip and hold on to and not drop your precious bar of alum. Uh, another great thing, well, we won't jump to that yet. First, and what we're gonna do now is a, a sponge. This is today's sponge. <laughs> the sponge I'll be using today, rather. Uh, this is rather big. You can cut this down to size, but this is another thing you can keep at the ready or at your sink or in your medicine cabinet. Uh, you can cut this to fit, but rather than putting your alum back in a plastic case without drying it off, um, you would put it on the sponge. A lot of people don't take care of these things. They don't dry them off. They're too quick to slap the cologne on or the aftershave. They forget all about the poor little loom. This, if it stays wet, it'll start pitting, it'll get rough, it'll dissolve even. So I recommend, I mean, in the past I've recommended drainable soap dishes. That's fine, but some of these soap dishes, the water doesn't really drain, especially if they're made out of plastic. They bubble up, it stays there, and this sucks it right in. So what I've done and been doing is I take a piece of sponge and I just leave it in my cabinet and I put it right on there. It's gonna be a dry sponge, however. <laughs> you don't want this sponge to be moist. Uh, the drier, the better, in fact. And this, you just put it on top of that, it draws the water down. It removes the water from the block, thus preserving your alum and keeping it around a little bit longer. So, another little tip. And lastly, back to our lobster claw elastics. Um, another great use for them, another great reason to keep that in your kit and on your person at all times, pardon the train, um, is for protecting your brush. Especially if it's a custom brush, a beautiful custom brush from Zen Shaves. Thank you, Robert Carey. Uh, he made this especially for me, and uh, Ryan got one as well. But these are, you know, it's just, it's just a piece of work, a piece of artwork, rather. Uh, Ryan's a piece of work, but we'll get back to that later. Um, you don't want to damage this. I barely want to use this. It's so beautiful. Um, however, I use it all the time because it's wonderful. But I always fear damaging the wood. So, that said, for you people out there with your custom brushes, beautiful wood handles or handles that, delicate handles, maybe a glass handle, maybe a, a, made out of a delicate material that you want to protect, especially if you're a face latherer, this, I'm sorry, especially if you're a bowl latherer, this really applies to bowl lathering. If you use a mug, um, I recommend using a wide mouth mug, the wider the better, one especially made for wet shaving. Um, a scuttle, you don't really have to worry about, they're a little more shallow, but those of you using mugs, that's a pretty wide mouth, but still you're going to get this, and you all know this sound, especially when you're trying to whip up a really thick lather, keep getting that ching, 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 and that over time, it's going to do damage to the wood. I mean, granted, this is very quality, you know, workmanship here. Robert's done all he can to protect this, I mean, with coats and coats of different shellacs or protective coverings, but still I, I worry. Part of me worries. We all worry. So what I've done, or what I do rather, if I do choose to mug lather, which I do on occasion, uh, we'll get back to that in another episode, I simply take the lobster claw elastic and I wrap it around the widest part of the brush. Just like that. Now remember the ching 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 sound? There we go. It's like a bumper car. I call it a brush bumper. So, I mean, I can move it up really fast. I'm protecting the wood. I'm still getting a little annoying noise, but it's so much more muted. And uh, I don't feel bad about doing this anymore. When I'm done, however, at, while I'm rinsing or cleaning off the brush, I make sure to remove the brush bumper because I don't want water to build up there and collect, and end up destroying the shellac or whatever he's covering this with. So, that is my quick wet shaving tip today, folks. Thank you for joining me. This is Douglas Smith from How to Grow Mustache and Mustache and Blade Podcast, signing off. Until next time, saludos. Where the hell's my pipe?